The views expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff. This is NTV People's Parliament the only platform that gives you Ugandans the opportunity to speak or have your say about government policies or issues that affect your everyday life. Tonight, we are discussing a very important topic that will facilitate us have a free and fair elections come February 2016. I am talking about electoral reforms. Honorable members, you are welcome to NTV People's Parliament. As you are aware, the Deputy Speaker Jacob Olanya found it difficult to raise quorum in the national parliament to have the constitutional amendments bill passed. But as you are aware, though the bill was passed, parliament shelved the, the minority report of the opposition for future consideration, which included restoration of presidential term limits and changes on the character and conduct of the electoral commission. So we are asking, what next for the opposition after their views being shelved by parliament? Honorable Shira Kawamara, you have the platform. Honorable members, colleagues in parliament, Madam Speaker, I'd like to make a statement on behalf of the political parties, opposition political parties that are in an alliance under the Democratic Alliance, TDA. Madam Speaker, as you are aware, colleagues, last year and 2013, political op parties in this country went all across the country in an effort to gather views from the public, views from Ugandans about having credible elections in our country. This was after we had the elections of 2011, which a number of Ugandans felt were unfairly conducted both the ruling party and the opposition party felt the elections of 2011 were not only unfair, but they were crudely conducted either way. So as citizens, as democracy-seeking citizens, religious leaders, and uh, all leaders from civil society, we traversed this country and collected views from members of the public. Madam Speaker, these views were presented in a citizen's compact, which was also presented later on to the government and to the parliament. To the legal and this parliamentary affairs committee. Madam right? Speaker, yes, right. Okay. And these views attracted a lot of support from the public. Madam Speaker, when these views were presented to the parliament of the Republic of Uganda, they w a co uh, the committee was asked to go and compile a report. This report was presented, but unfortunately, we were later informed that this report was, the official report was not the one presented. There was another minority report where the, the views of the people were completely neglected in the What report. What are those important, few, few important, are views that you think would have facilitated a free and fair election this come 2016? Madam Speaker, some of the things that the citizens of Uganda demanded for were an election whereby we would not have military or armed, I don't want to use an unparliamentary language, armed personalities taking charge of the elections. We wanted to have a civil police rather than having the military controlling the elections. Mm -hmm. We also wanted representation onto the electoral commission of all political parties because we are in a multi-party dispensation as a country. And so, some of these things, we wanted clearly demarcated constituencies and not formation of constituencies just before the elections as the case is happening with the formation of new districts and new municipalities and all these other administrative units. Madam Speaker, we wanted an election process that is transparent. And some of these things, we thought that with the electoral reforms that were proposed by the 
Act in the Citizens Compact and also by the iPod, we thought that we would get credible elections come 2016. Now those views have been shelved for future consideration. Yes. What next? Madam Speaker, Bushira. as democracy-seeking citizens through the Democratic Alliance, we are withdrawing. We already made ourselves clear that we are withdrawing from any dialogue with government as far as the iPod process is concerned. The iPod is the interpolitical inter organization's dialogue. We withdrew out of that dialogue. And we are going forward as an alliance of political parties op that are currently in opposition. And our goal is to take power come 2016. <laughs> we are fronting a single candidate who will be declared within a few, few weeks' time, by the 15th of September, the single candidate for the Democratic Alliance will be announced. Okay. And we believe that once the TDA is in power, we shall have an independent electoral commission that will guarantee <coughs> transparent elections for the future of Uganda. Okay. Thank you, Honorable. Probably without the electoral forms. Uh, we don't know whether that single candidate will go through. But Honorable, we have, Thank you, Madam Speaker. We have a member of parliament here, Honorable Mariam Narubega. Maybe you take us through what happened during the, the debate on this constitutional am amendments. You can take up this platform. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. The topic, uh, the constitutional reforms, electoral reforms in particular. Yes, I did participate. From the beginning, I did also consult my constituency. And I followed the Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee when they were carrying out public hearings. And I did also follow the civil society and the other platforms that pushed for reforms. I want first of all to thank the civil society and other actors who did push for the reforms in the Constitution and also in the electoral reforms. But you know this process of amending the Constitution, the process of enacting laws, Madam Speaker, is well spelled out in the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. And uh, when the bill was tabled, of course, it was tabled in, the, in, in that uh, perspective. Under Article 259 and Article 262, it went to the committee. The committee brought a report. Indeed, the minority report was also tabled. And the Speaker gave opportunity to members to debate both. And I think there was a contradiction. Because members of the opposition who represented the views of the civil society and other players did oppose the motion to debate the reports. And I was wondering, if you have your issues, you want to debate them, but then you say you don't want the debate, you know, to take off. I think they will contradict themse the themselves. You can go on the hand side. You can follow the proceedings that mm. the Honorable Katuntus, the so-and-so, did oppose the motion yeah. to discuss. The, even their own report, they opposed it. So it brought a challenge to the House. You know, how do we proceed? Those who are in favor of uh, debate, we had to say, let's debate, because we had issues. We thought we would support issues in the minority report, issues in the main report. But where the presenters or the, or the ones who are firm to the minority report say we don't want a discussion. They withdraw. They were withdrawing. Some of them walked out. You saw this happening in broad daylight. So we were paralyzed. We didn't know what to do next. But to follow what for us we had done our part. We had, I, uh, me myself, I had consulted people. I wanted my people's views to be heard. This debate was limited though. We did not have enough time to debate exhaustively the issues that we, need, we did want to be you know, discussed in the House. The committee left out so many things. Of course, Madam Speaker, you heard the, the, the committee saying that some of these issues, there was no time. And they would prefer to refer these issues or the proposals to the Constitutional Review Commission. And I think the opposition again later agreed that these proposals should be referred to the Constitutional Review Commission. I remember Hone Bonandala in particular, he said, we did not even consult our voters. Why are we discussing this? And, and some members were telling him, but you're a member of parliament, you're supposed to consult your voters every day. 
Why are you saying that you have not consulted? Whenever no, we need time. We need time to go and consult. So we cannot discuss this. And therefore, it, it was implying that the AG was right to say that there is no time to exhaust the issues that came, up, f came out from the public. And indeed, the opposition and us agreed. Because we wanted to look at term limits. We wanted to look at uh, <coughs> term limits not only for presidents, but even for affirmative action seats. We have members in parliament who have enjoyed affirmative actions for decades and decades. There are so many things that we wanted really to put in, you know, in order. But time was an issue. So, Madam Speaker, if the civil society, if the uh, political platforms, as, uh, opposition platform are saying they are pulling out, to me, I think pulling out is not an option. It's not good for the country. How best can we participate? I am an independent member of parliament, and this is my second time in parliament. But my voice has been heard, and is being heard. Whether you're minority, I don't think that majority can suffocate you forever. I don't think that is the best option for you to pull out of this because okay. we can do this, you know, step by what? By step. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Honorable Mariam. You'll get an opportunity. Did the opposition betray you, Honorable Shira Kawamara? Yes, the platform is open, Honorable Members. I'm Kasuma Faruk of Uganda from Highfield Think Tank. In 1980, <laughs> Ugandans were saying the most honored Ugandans for them they were saying the electoral commission was not good but there is a man who looked for electoral reforms from the masses I think this is the time if the parliament cannot make a great electoral reforms we need to go to the masses to make electoral reforms as a man in 1980 went somewhere to make electoral reforms Ugandans my take is very simple it is better to die fighting for freedom than living without freedom. Uh, I will quote uh, my Kasuma Farouk of Uganda quote. It says, weak people revenge, stronger people forgive, intelligent people ignore. But this time, I think the Ugandans are going to be weak in this kind of tech. So Ugandans, we need to rise up and fight for freedom. Because our children tomorrow are going to ask us, what did you do? When the nation was collapsing, Ugandans, we must rise up and defend our nation. Thank you very much. Thank you. But peacefully, please. Thank you. Please, you have the platform. Thank yep. you, Honorable Speaker. I'm Honorable Promise Sweeney, and I represent the people of Forode, Forum for Women in Democracy. I think as citizens of this country, we expected too much from this electoral reform process. And... Uh, from the onset, we saw a lack of commitment of parliament. Are you disappointed? I am very disappointed as a citizen of this country because my expectations were really sh uh, slashed out. And by the time we engaged the, the debate on n having no time to um, consider the people's proposals and the opposition's uh, uh, proposals for these electoral reforms, I think is not uh, an argument enough. Because even the time that the parliament had to consider these reforms. And then we had a report that came out from the Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee without any single of our proposals taken up besides the proposal on uh, the independent candidates, you know, moving out and seeking uh, 1,000 signatures from the, from the voters. I think it was really unfair to ask the citizens whom they consulted for the time that we spent engaging with the, the parliamentary committees. Isn't it okay they have shared them, they will discuss them at a at a later time. But at for which parliament? Because the argument is let the 10th parliament handle this. But then we should have postponed these elections if there was no time. We should have postponed these elections to, 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 to till further notice until this critical issue was handled. So how do we move from here? I think as citizens, since our members of parliament have disappointed us, the honorable member has just said that there was controversy, even the people who are supporting the proposals when the critical time to make a decision came, they do not want to, 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 to debate the, the, the report, the minority report. So how do we go from here? For me, I think it's a time to engage the people, for us to move ahead as citizens and speak to the people and to mobilize the person next to you, the person next to your household, the person in your bedroom, in your sitting room, and teach them what a free and fair election means. We have to be vigilant as citizens. We have to monitor the process. If you are waiting for 
um, a monitor to come from the from the EC from from from, <laughs> from Kenya, I think it would be unfair on your part. You as a citizen of Uganda, you need to monitor the process. Is it fair? Is it free? Is there double counting? You get my point, Madam Speaker. I get it, Honourable Member. So, and another thing, we also have to desist from manipulation. I'm seeing the trend of how the youth are being manipulated by uh, politicians vying for political positions. I'm seeing how the citizens are being manipulated. And we should desist from buying elections. We should desist from any form of manipulation. And this starts from with us, even as I'm here on live television. I'm calling upon my constituents from Fawode, from my district in Toma, disease from <laughs> vote buying, disease from manipulation. And I believe once we all take responsibility and monitor this process, we may see a free and fair election. Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, you're going to hear from Ugandans speaking from nowhere but people's parliament. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Kampala discussing electoral reforms. What next? Brian Tumsima is my name from Uganda National Students Association. Uh, Madam Speaker, I would like to say that in the very first time I am so disappointed in our parliamentarians. Uh, yes, the honorable members informed us that there could be, have been time challenges uh, the Attorney General uh, 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 interpreting here and there, but I don't think it is by coincidence that during towards the time of discussing these electoral reforms, each member of parliament received 110 million. Mm -hmm. Do you have proof? Yes, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, it is. Madam Speaker, I am in this house live. And I hear the member holding the floor, insinuating that each member of parliament pocketed 100, 100 million shillings to pass constitutional amendments or whatever. I am here. Can you put evidence in black and white that each member, including me, who is here, received 100 million shillings? Did and from who? And for what? <laughs> and in which notes? <laughs> and is he able to substantiate on this? Please. Is he in order to lie on the television, <laughs> a national television, and he coming from an institution that I, I cherish so much, the Uganda National Students Association, we do not lie. Is he in order to lie, Madam Speaker? Honorable member from uh, the Students Association, do you have evidence that honorable members of the National <laughs> Parliament pocketed 100 million shillings? Uh, Madam Speaker, I do not want to speculate. It is public knowledge that only members of parliament <laughs> received 110 million in the form of allowances, transport yes. refund. Yes. Can you imagine they received fuel, fuel of 110 million, which but fuel? That was fuel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it is okay, okay, that was money for, the, for, for fuel. It was not to pass the constitutional mm. amendments Why bill. So well, you were out of <laughs> order. Please proceed. Uh, <laughs> my, as I proceed, uh, right honorable speaker, I want to say this, that Somebody somewhere, okay, might have, co uh, might have uh, got the capacity to influence the 375 members of parliament to ignore the, 3, 000, uh, to ignore the views of the 3,000 people that were consulted to come up with the electoral reforms. But mm -hmm. I want to say that you will not have the capacity to bribe the 35 million people of Uganda I want to say that it is not the end that now the electoral forms were neglected. I want to say that the people of Uganda and the youth and the students have an option. We have very live examples of people power. The ladies in Amuru did it. Uh, you want to strip naked like the ladies of Amuru? No. <laughs> in 2009, people did it in Kampala. And uh, Honai Bomama Mabira protested again with the people and Mabira was not given away. Those are live examples to show that the people are there and we can to stand up and represent ourselves if the people who gave the mandate to represent us cannot represent our views. Okay. Thank you, right Thank now. you. 
I'm telling you we have a parliament that doesn't know that they are supposed to pass resolutions from parliament and they simply go to Chiangkwanzi. This is when people demand for, for money for fuel. We have issues tabled in parliament. You as a honorable member of parliament, if the katuntus had run out of parliament and the rest, what did you, what did you do? Because you are aware, you even collected views from your people in Gutambala. What did, why didn't you stand up and speak and speak on behalf of your people? She did. She did stand up. She, she, she informed you that she didn't stand up on the floor of parliament to defend the minority report, but the opposition MPs disappointed her. They walked out of parliament and they were all supporting This issue of electoral reforms is not for opposition MPs. It is for all members of parliament There's as long as they are in parliament for their people. Please. The Honourable Member wants to give us information. Yes, Honourable Member. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I think one thing Honourable Nalubega did not tell us or was not honest about was that before the, the bringing the issues to Parliament, there were so many underhanded methods done. And the opposition <coughs> members who were refusing to debate those reforms knew very well that government was laying them a trap that the debate was not going to be honest, you are going to be rushed through the bill, the, those reforms, and you are actually going to make sure that it passes. And we are aware, Madam uh, Honorable Nalwega, that these reforms are coming up in the first sitting of parliament, so that you lift, or the, those who will be in parliament, lift especially the presidential, the age limit. We are aware of that. And Honor that is why they could not debate the reforms at this particular Okay, Honorable Nalubega, do you have something to say about that, please? When we are debating in Parliament, we have rules of procedure. And one of our rules of procedure does not require us to debate in anticipation. You do not anticipate anything that will happen. Why would the opposition anticipate that this debate was not going to be a honest debate? That was anticipation. <laughs> Two, why would the opposition take rumors why wouldn't the opposition take, give chance to us, the independent members, who had our independent views that we had carried out all the way from our constituencies? And then they said that they cannot trust the debate. Why are they there in the first place? I think the opposition members of parliament let you down. They let us down because they were supposed to lead us we were supposed to follow. They worked all through the consultations. They were there. They were part of the committee. And that's why they were able to produce a minority report. Because they did participate fully. I strongly speak as a concerned Ugandan. I don't want to delineate myself from the legislators and we the citizens. Because the, the way Madam Speaker, I'm seeing the flow of this debate is that they are there and we are here. Who is letting who down? And who is responsible for what? Is it a blame game that we are going for? Or we are taking the responsibility as a trusted body of the Ugandan person to rule, to legislate, to judge in the favor of the citizens? When it comes to matters of national importance, how dare you, an entrusted legislator, come up to say that we did not have enough time to discuss matters of contention in this country? <laughs> it is very irresponsive. It is very disappointing. It's not the opposition now. It is not who is on which side. It is disappointing to the people of Uganda whose voice you are representing. You are representing a woman who is disabled, a woman who has no money to go to the hospital, and who is saying that, can you put up a reform which is protecting uh, public funds against being used in the electoral processes? And you can't add that in the electoral reforms because you do not have time. And every other day, more than the 16 women like me are dying. Are we being responsible legislators? Are we legislators anyway? Or we are throwing our country to the dogs? 
I act, I, I'm not even acting. I am really speaking from a point of disappointment. That at one moment, we need to get the citizens to occupy the parliament because then we have our issues. <laughs> yes, instead of electing, we are spending money electing. We are spending money. Now, really, money, money is flying out. But there is no... Women are dying of cancer every day. No politician, nobody can come up to say that let's, we are struggling in runs, marathons. Why? When our monies are being used in processes that are not benefiting us. If you're legislating and you can't legislate for my life as a Ugandan, then it is time to change. And we must accept that change can come from out. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. The Ugandans are speaking passionately, moreover. Yes, you have the platform. Thank you, Speaker. I want to start from the point, Madam Speaker, that we, 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 may, we were mistaken if at all we expected anything different from what we saw, especially from the fact that the, the citizens of Uganda came up with electoral reforms a, or a pact of electoral reforms way back soon after the elections of 2011. And that was in 2012, April 2012, if I recall well. Now, for one to stand here and say there was no enough time, yet the citizens did that four years back, is just underestimating the capacity of the citizens. That means that either the citizens are more smart and better uh, uh, prepared for their country, than the members of parliament that are supposed to lead the way. But remember, so, you know, in, in, within those constitutional uh, amendments bill, there was a clause that was facilitating independent MPs to cross from yes, please. to any parties. Yes, please. So they found the time to pass that one. Yes, please. They one. found, and, 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 and exactly, <laughs> Madam Speaker, that is, that is the point, and that is where I'm coming from. In the pact of the electoral reforms that citizens came up with early, uh, as early as 2012, all these issues were catered for. How to how the, the, the issues of, 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 of the electoral commission, the independence. This is the time for the citizens to come and forego, uh, uh, forego the differences within themselves and accept that they have a hurdle towards the vision they are looking at and see to it they combine efforts and front one, uh, front, uh, fr fr front uh, combined uh, candidates, for instance, and make amicable understanding that they need to first take away the hurdles, in which case the hurdles are the people who did not appreciate the citizens' views. And therefore, after that, that's when we can now start of debating okay. these, uh, uh, city, uh, these oh, reforms. Okay. As, 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 as early as even next year. Okay, time up, Honorable Member. Oh, you have heard the Ugandans speak. You have the platform, Honorable Member. Madam Speaker, what took place in Parliament was a demonstration speak that... Close uh, to the microphone, Honorable ...was a demonstration that uh, uh, the people's representatives... Uh, decided to throw away the will of the people, particularly given the investment and the time and the energies uh, that had been invested for many years. But also, it, uh, it is characteristic of the NRM-dominated parliament, because they have over 250, uh, and therefore, if they really wanted to, have to support the will of the people of Uganda, they would have done it. You did not need an opposition for you to do what is right for the people of Uganda. You had the numbers, and, and you had the mandate, and you lost it. You let should, us should you, Ugandans now you let us down. Because when I was in Moroto, Mr. Uh, Ma Madam Speaker, I was asked by a primary teacher, Mr. Pulk Honorable Pulkol, how many parliaments does Uganda have? I said, what do you mean? There's a parliament presided over by Honorable Rebecca Kadaga, which sits in Kampala with Jacob Alanya. There's another parliament that sits in State House in Tebe. There's another parliament that frequently sits in Changkwanzi. Which parliament did we send our MPs to? <laughs> now, because when the one in Kampala removes or removes taxes on kerosene, the one in Entebbe puts them back. <laughs> so in the case of electoral reforms, 
So on whose interest is the ninth parliament legislating? On the interest of ordinary citizens or on their own interests and the interest of the occupant of State House uh, Box 1 and Tebe? <laughs> <laughs> so when you look at that, what happened in parliament is that uh, the minority report included many of the proposals that citizens gave, like restoring term limits. How much time do you need really to pass the restoration of term limits. Just kindly tell me. Need a whole year? To restore just not even one hour? How, how, how much if you're really convinced about it? Uh, and it has taken... So even in the last, in 210, a lot of reforms again were brought. The same argument by the Eighth Parliament that there's not enough time. Let's give it to the next Parliament. Now again the Ninth Parliament is passing it on to the Tenth Parliament. And you have had President Museveni when Uhuru Kenyatta visited us, saying his next mission is to wipe opposition completely from <laughs> the 10th parliament. But is there opposition so, in parliament? And I'm you? telling you that the opposition, and that's why you saw the, the unemployed brotherhood recently painting even pigs on the street, red and light blue, meaning FDC and UPC, uh, joining now. It's no longer yellow M pigs, okay? Because these are... Really, I don't know whether they are MPs or they have become those who just eat for themselves only, like those other animals. <laughs> so, so I think the Muslim Brotherhood has got a point. And if our parliamentarians are not careful, they are slowly taking Uganda to the Burkina Faso case, where 23-year-old, 24-year-old are to come and burn parliament down. Today it's about the pigs. Tomorrow it could be a snake in parliament. The other time it could be a fire. So our parliamentarians need to take notice. Don't incite you, God. No, no, no. I'm member. just giving a case of Burkina Faso. Since our MPs have let us down, and when it comes to their personal emoluments, they join together. If they are voting for their own cars, their own iPads, their own transport refund, their own fuel, there is no opposition, there is no government. I think time for us is to throw all these people out in the next election. I think they deserve to be removed, uh, all of them except none. Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, you are going to hear more from Ugandans. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Kampala discussing electoral forms. What next? for position. They wanted the restoration of term limits. They wanted the independent electoral commission, but none of those has been considered in the constitutional amendments bill. So what next? Honorable members, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Skip, Speaker, for the invitation that you've given us. This is my first time to be to the People's Parliament. My name is Honorable Tafaz Wamropa. I'm under the SADAC Women's Parliamentary Caucus, being hosted by Forward Day. I'm under also the SADAC Parliamentary Forum Observer Team. Uganda is one of the uh, key African nations that has been spearheading issues around development, not only at a EU level, but also at a global level. It's also a signatory to the African Union, the African Charter, um, Charter on Elections, Democracy and Governance. I can name a lot of protocols that Uganda has signed to. We need to take into account of the needs of our people. What do people want at the end of the day? Elections are only, it's a process, it's not an event. And for me as a female uh, parliamentarian, uh, Honorable Madam Speaker, I'm concerned about the political motivated violence against women. What have we learned in 2011? Have we put these issues in place? Are we discussing these issues in parliament? Are we holding our legislators responsible for the past crimes. What can we do as Ugandans? What common points can we come together and say we want a free, fair, and peaceful elections? The challenge we have in this country is not parliament. The challenge we have in this country is a person who has inst inst institutionalized himself, who has crippled institutions and personalized the country. I'm not saying any, any other thing, but when, uh, His Excellency, President Yoweri Museveni. He has liberated the parliament by, ca by, cap by capturing it. That's why 
when the, uh, the, ninth, uh, the ninth parliament united at the beginning and they were investigating the oil scandal, they had to trim the, 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 wing, the wings of parliament. The, when, the, the health, when the parliament put, put down its foot and said, we cannot actually approve money for jets unless uh, the health budget is approved, he saw a very, uh, he saw he was, uh, he was losing it all. So he had to trim them, he had to, to decapitate them, and he had to call them singly to Wachitura. And at the end of it all, Uganda was sold. Whenever any, any important decision is to be made, it is via State House, through Wachitura, and, and back to Parliament, uh, everything is rubber stamped. So what do we have? In Uganda, it's like we have only one man. When 37 million, uh, wh when you want something done, he, uh, it's like he says, stop to think and let one man think for you. When he wants 125 billion for presidential jets or whatever, I'm not using the real, uh, the real figure. 37 million Ugandans deep 37 million hands in 37 million pockets, and the 125, million, uh, 125 billion is raised <laughs> within no minute. Our MPs are supposed to be accountable to us. People who know what to do are fearing to stand up and be counted. Dear members of parliament, you have sold your souls to the devil. Forgive the pun. The devil can mean anyone here. You're very, very short-sighted, and you're only thinking about who are those? today. Who are those? The, the, ninth, the ninth parliament of Uganda. Because you started very well and you applauded in the first like six months, then later you deteriorated into something we don't understand. Before we knew it, you were you were asking for iPads that later we discovered you were using to play matatu in parliamentary sessions. Yet <laughs> children, <laughs> children, <laughs> children, on that. Madam Speaker, I want her to <coughs> ask me any clause in the Constitution. <laughs> and she sees if I cannot get it for her on this iPad. And I play Matatu. Is she in order to depict members of Parliament as short sighted and Matatu players? <laughs> My people of Butambala have rated me as their best MP. Is she in order? A honorable member speaking might have seen a picture of an MP playing matatu in a newspaper some time back. But that does, does not mean that all members of parliament play matatu, please. He was, he was... Uh, use a parliamentary language. Uh, thank you member. very much, honorable. But then, when it comes to the electoral reforms, really, the short-sightedness comes here. Because you're only thinking about today. How about tomorrow? How about the children that, that are writing on the floor? when actually you're using that iPad. But the children of Uganda are writing on the floors, on the ground, and then it's rubbed tomorrow. They don't have anywhere to read. And then you tell me that the parliament is not short-sighted. Pregnant mothers die every day. When you, got, when you people, when you... Uh, 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 oh, I don't remember, I let us debate the issue of electoral <laughs> form and do not attack the national parliament. Dear, please, dear, please. dear... <laughs> Dear citizens of Uganda, the Constitution of Uganda, Chapter 1, says, Power belongs to the people who shall exercise that sovereignty in accordance with the Constitution. Just, dear members of Parliament, just because you see the beautiful sunrise upon our beautiful country does not mean that we are being pushed, the people of Uganda are not being pushed to the wall. One day, the tip of the iceberg will just be broken, and your consequences will be first. One of the articles where we are, which was in the Citizens Compact on the Electoral Commission, they said we are changing the name. If they change my name, like they don't call me Florence, but I don't pass through the structures, am I molded to perform better? Or I remain the same person? I am here to express disappointment that you really let us down. I feel this parliament was out of motion and something unusual happened because uh, in, in most cases the house is empty but on that time in that session the house was full to the brim they brought even more chairs but what did they discuss 
telling us that they had no time. What time did they need to say we are passing this or that? And again, the citizens' compact was given to all members of parliament, was discussed when we were passing it in the, the Hotel African. Some members were representing. What time did they need? The issues were at hand. But what they lacked was the will to pass them. Okay. I call upon the Ugandans, the Ugandan citizen, to be alert. Exercise your citizens' roles, your, <laughs> your civil rights, and do the needful. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, Honorable Shira Kawamara, please. Maybe you, 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 can, you, you can, you remember, Honorable Kantun to, uh, spoke, uh, said the reason they, 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 they voted for, for, for the electoral forms as opposition was to ensure that the, 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 the minority report is saved for the next parliament. That if they had rejected, maybe even the minority report would have been rejected and would not have surfaced anywhere. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I think you have really rounded it up very well. Because had, they deb had the opposition debated, then the deb the, that debate would not be reopened up even in the next parliament. So that was also a tactic that was used by the opposition. But Madam Speaker, I would like to assure Ugandans out there that the opposition is not pulling out of the elections. The opposition is going ahead with the elections under the Democratic Alliance. And we are committed and we <coughs> promised Ugandans that we are going to restore sanity in our country we are going to restore the functioning of institutions. We are going to eliminate all forms of corruption because we have seen our country going down. We want to initiate and implement policies and programs that will ensure security and stability with peace and security as our core. We do not want to see the militia forces that are now <coughs> springing up and government is silent. Every other person who is disagreeing with the other is coming out to say they would form a militia group to defend themselves. Okay. We want institutions that defend all Ugandans. Okay. And Thank we appeal to Ugandans to support the Democratic Alliance and leaders that can bring sanity into this country. Okay. Thank you, Honourable. Thank you, Honourable. Honourable. Honourable Mariam, can you give us, give Ugandans hope on what will happen on their <laughs> views that we have presented to Parliament and have been... Uh, have they been saved or shelved? What Madam will happen Speaker, next? Thank you. In one uh, minute, I please. I would like to thank Honorable uh, Shira Kawamala. She has, I think, given us a good way forward. Indeed, I think if uh, the minority report was not saved, if we had debated, there was no, nothing to be saved for the future. And two, <coughs> having no time may not apply to everything. But in the case of the Electoral Commission, where there were suggestions of advertising positions, of having conducting interviews, they ne we needed time for that. And indeed there was no time, unless the elections were to be postponed, just as other people did want that to happen. But to do the Kenyan way, the IBC of Kenya, we needed time, almost a whole year, to do what Kenya did. And we did not have that time. Madam Speaker is on record. Kenya did not do that in one month, in two months, or three months. So we talk they about time. You Ugandan. But I hope I want to carry from what Tony Boshira has proposed. Ugandans are there. It's the responsibility of Ugandans to determine a leader, a good leader. Leaders cannot be imposed in a democracy we have where people wake up and go to the belt and cast their vote. Let them vote the, the, the eligible leaders, the capable leaders, the trusted leaders. If you vote an untrusted leader, what will you get out of that? So Ugandans should play their role. The civil society should, should play their role. The politicians should not bribe voters. And the voters should not be bribed themselves. Why should you take a bribe? to vote okay. for somebody. So okay. if we, have a f we want a free and fair election, it's upon us, the citizens of Uganda, to determine it. Okay. Nobody will give it to us. Thank it you. is us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. You. This is NTV People's Parliament, the only platform that gives you opportunity to speak out. Honorable Members of the National Parliament, the Executive, and other leaders in this country, you have had Ugandans speak about the electoral forms.
I am aspired to inspire Ugandans before I expire. And with the powers conferred upon me as the Speaker of People's Parliament, I add again this house until next week. The views expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff.